Hello, this is a Keystone projector, 16 millimeter. I have started the film through already. It works. I'm about to demonstrate that it works. The one thing that is not working is this light should be on and you should be able to cover it like that. And I guess the bulb was burned out, but as you're about to see, everything else in this is working. I'm going to be projecting it on the back of my fridge because I don't think setting up a giant screen is necessary when shooting. That would be a nightmare. The image is going to be tiny on the fridge, but you should see it. It is running. And as you can see, it is projecting. That is a little bright. So I'm going to reshoot that. But as you can see, it is running. Just fine. The film that we have in there is I don't think that's actually the uh, Goodbye, Mr. Mott. Six seven uh, sorry, four seven six castle films. So I'm gonna move the camera so that you guys can see the projection and it is lit properly, which also involves turning the lights off in the room. But I'll see you then. All right, you can hear the film projector running in the background. Here is a bit of that film that we're playing. I'm sorry for the waves going through. Uh, that's just an aspect of how cameras work. As you can see, it's running a little slow. I should probably speed that up, give me a second. I don't think we need to see the entire film, but there you go. There's a demonstration of this particular film projector working. Um, I'm going to cut back to something you guys can see because I need to turn the lights back on and get everything in a better layout, including unthreading the film. So I'll see you back in a minute. Hello. Here is the film projector. You might notice it looks so different than it did in the last clip. That's because I've taken some stuff off. I've taken the film reel off. This is still on. It's basically assembled apart from dethreading the film. It's also cooled, so I can put this away now. And that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you not only putting this away, but what is included here in the box. Another thing that's important is this is a retractable cable um, wire for the power cable, so that goes away. Flip this up, take off the film reel. Everything is off. I'm gonna flip that down so it doesn't get caught on anything. This needs to be up when running and down um, when reversing. Bad. We can open this. This comes with the manual, the care and operations manual, and has its original case. This is the take-up reel. This goes right here on this back piece and hangs there. There you go, you can see it right in there. Somewhat, sorry, it's a bit dark. But the other thing goes in there is right up here. And that is for this. You can screw it in and out for focus. But what you actually need to do is you need to remove it completely because it's a bit long. You don't want to catch it on the side. Now once you get past a certain point, it pops out. You also have to lift this to put it back in, but you can slot it right up here where it sits. Sorry for the cut there. So take the, this film ring and put it in there. This is a take-up reel. 
Um, then you take the film projector, put it in like this. You take the manual, and I'm going to put it right over here along the side. Actually, I'll put it over here. Then you can close this and lock it. There's your film projector. I'll be right back in a second. I, I am back. What I want to get is this cardboard box. Might just look like a normal cardboard box, except for the fact that this is the original box that the projector came in. And it comes with this. Now we're gonna cut over to showing you the actual films that are in the set and the camera that is coming with this as well. Welcome back. Here are the films. You have Andy Panda. This is the film that we were showing, demonstrating it. It's in a cardboard box. There's a title. It is purely in the cardboard box, just in there, nothing else. And you have these two tins. These are a bit of an unfortunate story. Um, as film gets older, It has a bad habit of doing this. But this, these films are broken in here. I rolled them up, but yeah, these, each of these is snapped near the beginning. I don't know if they're snapped elsewhere in there. In there. That is theoretically repairable, but I'd rather leave that up to who's ever going to be getting this in the end, to decide whether or not you want to restore these particular two films. Um, these are, are Scotchman tight. And Africa Squeaks. Both of these films are in fact broken. But all three of these will be included in this particular lot. I'm gonna cut away and show you the camera. Hello, this is a rather nice thing to see. It is unfortunately a bit damaged. This piece has become unsewn. As a handle, I wouldn't lift it by that though. And on the front you have this release. This still is connected on the top. Sorry about that. It has a pocket rangefinder. So you can use this to determine the range of things when shooting, which is important with an older camera like this. And here, you can see inside the case there, there is papers down here. But here is the camera itself. I do not believe there is film in this, but because I am not sure, I'm going to show you this running and I'm not going to open it. You can run it like this. It does in fact run. There you go. You just have to tighten this up. You can flip this up and use the sights on the top. So you find it and then flip this down. And it will run. Again, I don't know if any film is in this. It does not look like it, but you could set the two different settings run and lock right along the top. 
But yeah, there's a demonstration of this, in fact, running. And there's a little plate in the front. But yeah, this is a very nice camera. You do put it lens down, which does feel a bit odd, but it is a protector at the bottom to keep it from being damaged. But yeah, there's this, there was a lot of strap around the top originally that connected between these two. That is now gone. But yeah, here's the camera. And this is the last part of this particular lot.